Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to Dr. Rajkumar's learning app. In today's video, we will be discussing about Biodiversity Amendment Act. So what is this Biodiversity Amendment Act? Before we start with it, first let us understand what is biodiversity. Let me play a small clipping so that it becomes very clear what biodiversity is all about. Here is the clip. What is biodiversity? We shall learn it with an example. Most of us like having pet animals at our homes. Usually pet animals are dogs, cats or many other birds we will like to keep it at our houses. Considering dogs, let us say I have a German Shepherd at my home and my neighbor has a pug and another neighbor has beagles at their houses. Collectively, we call them as dogs, but we can easily differentiate between them. They are different in their size, different in their height and different in their weights. So we see some variations. This is what we call it as diversity. Biodiversity is nothing but the variety of life present on this earth. Biodiversity can be seen in all animals. Biodiversity is found everywhere on this earth with every organism. Examples for biodiversity in animals are, they say that 20,000 species of ants have been reported, 3 lakh species of beetles, 28,000 of fishes and 20,000 species of orchids have been reported globally. Biodiversity doesn't exist only at its species level, but it is also found in all levels of biological organizations, that is from cells to biomes. We can see diversity in cells, also in biomes we can see diversity. Now that we know what is biodiversity and we understand the importance of biodiversity as quite essential for the protection of life on the planet, what has Government of India done to conserve this biodiversity? Well, the Government of India has come out with Biodiversity Act 2002. What does this act do? Well, the act speaks about conservation of biodiversity. It has enabling provisions to conserve the biological diversity. It speaks about sustainable use of its components. And it also speaks about fair and equitable sharing of the benefits arising out of the use of biological resources and knowledge. What does this mean? Well, for let me take an example. You guys know about Himalayan yew? Himalayan yew is a tree that is grown in the Himalayas. It is endemic to Himalayas. And we find that this tree has many anti-cancerous properties, right? This tree is used in the treatment of uh, cancer. This tree is used in the treatment of cancer. And we find that Himalayan yew is also used by the local communities. For example, the Botia community, which uses it for making herbal medicines and tea. They make herbal tea out of this. Now, to ensure that even the local people who have their own way of using these kind of trees is sustainable and equitably shared as well as to the big MNCs who need this to make anti-cancerous drugs. This act enables the sustainable use of this particular biological resource, right? Which is fair and equitable available to both the local communities, the local practitioners, as well as to the corporate world. Well, now coming to the need for the amendment for Biological Diversity Act. What, why was there a need? Well, the previous act had heavy compliance burden, especially for medicinal practitioners, seeds, corporate companies. There was a lot of processes which needed to be simplified further. And this is one of the outcomes of this. Simplify the research processes because there needs to be a collaborative process between the corporates, between the traditional medicines, Ayush practitioners, so that there is further use of Indian medicines, right? Indian medicine system can be boosted only when the procedures have been simplified. Before this, there was, you know, uh, a need for Hakim's, all these people to take permission from the government. So this bill, what does it do? It tried to comply with the Nagoya Protocol. This Nagoya Protocol forms the basis for all the conservation of biological diversity. This is the international agreement and international treaty which sets the basis on how to conserve biodiversity. One more fact that you would uh, like to remember is India is a signatory to the Nagoya Protocol. Remember this part. So there was a need for a diversity amendment bill, right? 
and as a result the government has come up with a amendment bill what are the main provisions of this amendment bill well the first and the most important thing is they are trying to simplify the process for patenting by giving access to biological resources and intellectual property rights how does this simplify the process let me give an example previously organizations which were registered in india or indian registered organizations what they had to do is they had to apply to nba national biodiversity authority right before get, even applying for patents they had to apply for nba and get an approval from nba before applying for patents after this approval only they could go ahead and apply and this was actually limiting the indian or uh, registered organizations right now with this current bill the need for indian registered organizations to take nba approval has been removed and foreign companies can also invest but foreign companies have to invest in an indian company and these companies need to take nba approval but they can simultaneously also apply for the patents only condition is that before the grant of patents nba approval must be present right so in this way we find that the process for patenting has been simplified right coming to exemptions we find that ayush practitioners hakims all these people they have been exempted from taking nba approval for use of medicinal plants previously even the ayush practitioners hakims they had to take nba approval but with this amendment they don't need to take nba approval anymore now thirdly this amendment tries to in encourage cultivation of medicinal plants previously the seed company or a farmers group had to take an nba approval again if they had to cultivate medicinal plants but now this amendment does away with this and what it says is if a seed company or a farmers group has taken an approval or has been granted the right under the protection of plant varieties and farmers right act right this is a very important act protection of plant varieties and farmers rights act if they have taken an approval then they don't need to take nbs approval any longer they are exempted from all the uh, processes of you know registering with the nba as a, as a result this will attract investment and i just said even foreign companies have been allowed there have been processes set in the amendment act by which the foreign companies can invest in the development of the biological resources and sharing of it and certain processes have been also decriminalized what kind of processes well for example previously the offenses under the act were cognizable and non bailable what do i mean by cognizable the police could arrest without a warrant all these provisions have been deleted in this amendment bill and further it simplifies regulation it tries to bring in a better process for regulation and it tries to strengthen the state biodiversity board as per the act every local body had to set up a biodiversity management committee right now this act further what it does is it empowers the state government to come out with district level biodiversity management bodies right and further strengthens the state biodiversity board also this act how does it further strengthen the state government or the state biodiversity board previously central government was the only authority which could say whether a species is threatened right it was the only authority which could classify whether the species is threatened now how does the act further try to strengthen the state governments well before the central government was the only authority it was the only authority which could say whether a species is threatened now this act this amendment delegates this power even to the state government the state government can also classify a species as threatened only thing is it must consult nba priorly 
so we see with these kind of provisions the state biodiversity board has been strengthened and also we find that the act tries to streamline the process of patenting and tries to improve investment as well as fair and equitable sharing of resources well we find that the bill increasingly focuses on commercialization and the foreign companies might try to use the loopholes in the system and make maximum use of it right the bill still needs to go a thorough reading and tries to and needs to address the loopholes that are present and when it comes to cultivation of medicinal plants and when coming to cultivation of plants we find that both commercialization and cultivation go hand in hand the main objective of conservation of biological diversity act is to conserve biodiversity but commercialization has become the major focus of the amendment there at the cost at the cost of conservation this has become a major concern and especially giving exemption to ayush practitioners might lead to biopiracy biopiracy is another grave concern it's the practice of exploiting naturally occurring genetic or biochemical material in commerce so by giving exemption to ayush practitioners of no longer needing to take approvals biopiracy could be encouraged as well as there is a lot of ambiguous provisions and which as i said might lead to further exploitation of the loopholes by the foreign companies and maximizing commercialization of products now for example i spoke about himalayan yew right himalayan yew can be commercialized and you know there can be large scale felling of the trees which might be result in loss of this particular biodiversity and with certain provisions uh, you know being decriminalized there is further scope for exploitation of by the local communities and there will be more problems that arises so the provisions have been removed deleted yes but as there been a parallel provision which has been put in place parallel system no so this is another major concern that we have so now how can we try to address these concerns the fares loopholes have been already identified we need to work on amending this with effective implementation of this we can further ensure that the communities are involved in the protection and conservation of biodiversity now secondly integration of this international treaties you know the implementation of nagoya protocol when it should not only be involved only with nagoya protocol we need to integrate other treaties for example like the international treaty on plant genetic resources for food and agriculture if we can integrate this treaty which also considers the legislative administrative and policy measures of uh, biodiversity conservation if we can integrate we have a better framework of framework and reference to go about right thirdly people's biodiversity register should aim to document folk knowledge of status uses history ongoing changes forces driving changes in biodiversity resources people's perceptions if we can integrate and you know if we can record all these and document it becomes a very powerful instrument it will be very useful to preserve the rights of farmers or communities over the traditional knowledge they hold over a particular variety we need to focus on documenting and strengthening the people's biodiversity register right these are some of the suggestions for more such videos please subscribe to our channel and keep watching have a good day